All right, welcome back. Wow. Much love to all of you. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Um, last video was received really well by all of you, answered a question that I was curious about myself. So I'm glad that I was able to answer the question for a lot of you as well. But you're here because this is the follow-up video. A lot of comments came in, a lot of the same comments I saw over and over. But before we move on, I wanna tackle one thing. I apologize. It was so late when I did the last video. I had gotten it that day and I was super excited so I wanted to review it and get it done right away that I had a little Freudian slip. That I said something wrong and a lot of you were not shy to correct me on that. This is the Mac Mini, the M1 Mac Mini. Um, the two USB-C ports, they're Thunderbolt 3, not Thunderbolt 4, but they are USB 4. So thanks for correcting me on that. Really appreciate you for uh, Leave in the comment, let me know. Because yeah, that is not some technology that we wanna say that's out there, that is. Um, but yeah, so there's the correction there. Next, what we're gonna talk about, before we get into the video, um, we're gonna talk about some video editing tips that I have for you. Um, talking about hard drives, let's talk about hard drives real quick. The M1 Mac Mini has an internal hard drive. And a video editing workflow, this is what I would recommend. Just based on my experience, this is what I recommend. And it gets a little pricey. As you know, when it comes with video, um, it's just a really pricey hobby to have. You gotta get your camera gear, your lighting gear, your audio gear, your setup, your computer, your editing software, all of that. But let's talk about hard drives. The hard drive editing workflow. Typically, in the past, I've edited straight off an SSD from my MacBook or whatever computer I was using, straight off the, the SSD that was built in because I felt like it was faster. And technically it is. The only problem to that is that you put wear and tear on your internal drive. So what I would recommend is actually to have three different hard drives. I know, I know, that's pretty expensive. Three different hard drives. Let me explain. When you use your internal hard drive in your computer, put wear and tear on the hard drive, even though there aren't moving parts on there, it's still wear and tear on the drive. So what I would recommend is not editing off your internal drive. Use your internal drive for your operating system, your documents, your pictures, you know, the local files that you're gonna access frequently that aren't really gonna change that much. Um, maybe change a little bit when you make little incremental changes to your documents and your pictures, but really those are things that don't change that much. When you're doing video, those change a lot because you're gonna work on a video project, wrap it up, package it, move on to the next video project. So there's a lot of adding and removing of files to your hard drive as you're doing a lot of video. So I would recommend not to do that with an internal drive. So think of the investment here to make your machine last longer. Now next, your second thing I would recommend is an external hard drive as a scratch disc. This is the brand new SanDisk Extreme Pro portable SSD. This is the brand new NVMe version and boy is this quick. If you have the right setup with the right computer and the right, um, <laughs> the right Thunderbolt 3 USB 4 ports, um, and the right hard drive, then editing off of a hard drive externally can be just as fast as editing off of an internal drive. So this brand new one here, um, it is pricey. This is about roughly $500 US for this two terabyte. What two terabytes, a little overkill. Um, but technically what I would do in my workflow is I would shoot and then I would drop all the files onto here. I would edit right off of here. I'd plug it in my computer, edit right off of this. And then when I'm done with that project, export, saved, everything packaged up, and I'm done with it, it's all published. What I would then do is move all of these files to my third hard drive, which is an external storage. So that could be as slow as or, or as fast as you want, but you can get a big, thick old external hard drive just to store everything on. And, and I know, probably gonna get some NAS server comments. I'm, I'm not quite there yet in my budget. I know, I know, there's, there's like, if you make the jump now, It'll be cheaper in the long run. I'm, I'm not ready to jump that far yet for NAS storage. Um, but what I would do from here is I would package up all these files, put it on the external hard drive and shelf that. Put it on the shelf, literally, like one of the shelves that I have over here, and just hold that. Now, if you wanna get crazy, I do have a fourth hard drive backing up that hard drive as well. But kind of going back here is I edit off this one, then when I'm done, I package it and put it in storage. So I would recommend getting an external drive. I'll have a link in the description for this. But today we're gonna to talk about the editing workflow. That's why you're here. You wanna see how scrubbing looks in the timeline, in the video timeline in Premiere Pro on the M1 Mac Mini. And I'm gonna do some comparisons of how it looks 
when the files are locally on the M1 or when the files are on this external drive here. So we'll do some comparison, some tests, some scrubbing there. And yeah, I, this is a question a lot of you have asked because sure, exporting is great, but how's the actual workflow? So stick around and we'll get into it right after this. All right, as you can see on my screen here, this is Adobe Premiere Pro on my M1 Mac Mini. This is actually the video project and timeline of my video last week that you saw on the M1 Mac Mini and exporting in Premiere Pro. So this is the entire project here. I've got a couple of layers of audio, as well as I've got some 4K video here. And I've got some text files, some graphics here, and some dynamic linking to some After Effects files here. Now the After Effects file here isn't that robust. I really only have a timer moving here in the timeline. Um, but I mean, this is the full project. This is the full timeline here. Uh, when I first opened up Premiere Pro on the M1 Mac Mini, it would open the sequence here in half a resolution. And typically I'm used to a quarter resolution. So that was kind of nice because in the past, since I was on a slower machine, if you would, um, it would go with a quarter resolution. So going to a half resolution, that was really nice. Also, um, these weren't proxy files at the time. So let's do kind of a scrub and playback here of what the files look like as I'm playing in the timeline. So what we're gonna look at here is we have the Premiere Project file opened of my video from last week. And this is with the files hosted locally on the M1 Mac Mini itself, directly on the computer. All right, so let's take a look at this part right here. We got a couple of After Effects layers here, as well as 4K video underneath. We're previewing this at half resolution and these are not proxies. So I want you to focus and pay attention on the delay here, if there's any delays, as I'm scrubbing the timeline here. Scrubbing looks pretty good. And then if I hit play. What's interesting is, I don't know if you've seen my channel before. Actually, let me skip ahead. Let's go check it out. Yeah. So you see the After Effects transition there. And this is just regular playback at half a resolution. There's my After Effects layer with 4K video underneath. So there are the results there. So it plays pretty well. There's a couple of other layers right here. If I just scrub the timeline here. I just want, what I want to show you is that if, is there any delay in anything? So it does play pretty well there. Um, but you know, I'm so used to using proxies and I'm so used to quarter resolution. I figured that if I do that, that'll help me up the speed of it a little bit more. So I'm going to change to a quarter resolution, turn my proxies on, and then let's go back to this spot right here and hit play. And then it's each timeline. Let's go check it out now. So it does look pretty decent in the playback. I mean, when I blow it up, it's it's a quarter resolution, so it's a little blurry. But as for previewing and edit editing, that's pretty good. Um, so that's locally on the M1 Mac Mini. Next, I wanna do a render test of this video you saw last week. And while that's loading up the media encoder, I know what you're thinking. A lot of you have said like, but it's not optimized for M1 chip yet. I know, and that's the amazing part about this, is that Premiere Pro isn't optimized to use the M1 chip yet, it's using Rosetta. So with that, the performance is pretty good. So once Premiere Pro supports the M1 chip, I would imagine it's gonna be even faster. So let's go here, we've got the export, and we'll just see how long it takes to render that file out. All right, I'm gonna have the timestamp right here. It took 10 minutes and 52 seconds to render the video from last week on the internal drive of the M1 Mac Mini. So that's pretty fast in Premiere Pro. Um, also, one thing I forgot to mention was that these layers of video right here, they do contain a color grade on there as well. So it's kind of a little heftier when it comes to the export. And I was exporting at H.264 in um, 1080p. So kind of give you a resolution spec there and the file type there that I, I, I commonly use. 
So what we're looking at here is that same project but opened up with my SanDisk Extreme Pro portable SSD. So I have this project opened up on the SSD, same exact file, we've got uh, 4K video clips, it's a 1080 project. Um, we've got After Effects dynamic linking to these two. Um, these two are the same After Effects file, but it's dynamic linking to After Effects. Um, got those going as well. They're pretty lightweight. They're not like complex After Effects overlays, but I typically don't use very complex After Effects um, overlays in my videos. So what we have here is we have a half a resolution preview, and this is the timeline here. You can play. Final Cut Pro 10, I just put Premiere Pro for my workflow. Let's scrub the timeline as well to see how well that does. We'll go left, we'll also go right. Let's go over here to where I have the After Effects dynamically linked files here. Export 4K footage, five minutes each timeline. Let's go check it out now. So this is at a half a resolution. Everything's looking good. I have about four audio effects on the audio one of the audio layers as well. So, so the, the playback the is pretty there. decent. Final Cut Pro renders this right under three minutes. So that's just looking at it. This is again using the external drive to edit on. Now let's see how long it takes to export this video from the drive. Take a shot every time I say external drive. Um, let's see. So H.264, I like to do YouTube 1080. Okay, now we're going to export from the external SanDisk drive and back to the external SanDisk drive. All the project files on there, everything's on there, it's all hosted on there. So while this export, let's see how long that'll take. Well, that was unexpected um, and expected at the same time. Editing off of the external drive is actually faster than editing with the internal drive. Um, given by like 20 seconds or so. Um, here's the timestamp right here. This is how long it took to render that video using the hard drive, the external hard drive, at 10 minutes and 27 seconds. So I'll compare both the times right here of the different setups of how long it took to export. Um, but again, like I said, it is a little pricier to get the SanDisk External Extreme Pro. This is the NVMe version, it's the latest version. It's pretty fast, as you can see here. So there you have it. They're scrubbing the timeline. They're using dynamic linking with very light After Effects. I apologize. I know you guys are really excited to see the results of some pretty complex After Effects files. Maybe I'll do that in the future as well. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments. If you found value in what you saw here, please hit subscribe like the video and share it with friends. You guys have been awesome so far. Thanks for watching my other video about the M1 Mac Mini. Here's a link right here. I'll have it here if you want to check out that video. Thanks for watching that on the rendering times in 4K. And again, thank you for watching. And I realize if you want to spend the three extra three or four hundred dollars, you could actually get the same Mac Mini setup inside of a MacBook Air. Specs pretty much the same, except there's a lot more fan airflow in the M1 Mac Mini. But yeah, it's crazy how these machines are very similar to each other. But yeah, thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a happy Thanksgiving. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace and love.